Hey guys, for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make my quick French bread. And yeah, so let's just get started. First things first, you get a huge bowl that you can use for everything. You're going to put a half a cup of warm water in the bowl with one and a half tablespoons of yeast. And this is just to activate the yeast. You could let it sit for a couple minutes. I don't. I just mix everything in a bowl. And then one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Basically, the sugar is just to let the yeast feed on it, since the yeast is a bacteria. That's I'm gonna add one and a half tablespoons of oil. I really don't know the purpose of the oil. It's just, I guess, to give a nice shiny finish once the bread is done. I'm just gonna add two and a quarter teaspoons of salt when I make the bread this isn't the first time um my mom actually says it needs more salt so I actually put three whole teaspoons of salt and it still wasn't I guess savory enough but you guys put as much or as little as you want so now slowly I'm going to be adding six cups of flour so first off I start with three cups and I just start mixing it with an electric beater, which you guys will see in a little bit because I do a close up of the dough for you guys. Okay. The hook I'm using on my Black & Decker hand mixer is a dough hook. If you guys want, you can use a KitchenAid, but this one was easier. Okay, and after I incorporate the first three cups, I go ahead and add another cup of flour and then beat it again till it's incorporated. Okay, that is after four cups of flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another cup now and it'll be my fifth. adding the six cup of flour my hand mixer would not move anymore so in fear of breaking it I mixed the rest of my hands and whatever else I couldn't mix with my hand I just dumped the whole thing on my work surface that is nicely floured add the rest of the remaining flour on top and I'm just gonna basically knead it in if you guys don't know what kneading is for it's basically to activate the yeast to make it elastic -y and gluten-y so yeah so as you can see I bunched the dough together then push out with the palm of my hand or the heel of my hand I guess it's called so basically you do that till the dough does not stick to your salt to your hand and you're able to form a ball without it like being sticky Now that the bowl, the, the bowl, <laughs> the dough is all incorporated, you spray the bowl you made the mixture in, apply the ball of dough, put more spray, turn it upside down. You basically want to cover that for about five minutes. Next, put plastic wrap if you want. You could put a kitchen towel. Excuse plastic wrap. So you wait five minutes, and once you come back, you go ahead punch out the dough so you punch out the air knead it a couple times in the bowl cover it all over again and come back I believe I did 10 minutes okay so yeah I did 10 minutes and again you punch out the dough uh, my 
mine got a little bit sticky. So, as you see, I sprinkle a little bit more flour. And you basically just knead it again in the bowl. As you guys can tell, the more I let it sit, the bigger it gets. One, I was cooking something next to it, so it's always good to keep it somewhere warm. But not that you start cooking the dough. Okay. So, after the second time, I wait another 10 minutes. And now that the dough has risen, you're going to put cornmeal on a baking rack or baking tray. The cornmeal is just to make to prevent the bread from sticking. If you guys have parchment paper, you could just use that. I don't, so I just use a cornmeal. And now it's time to form our loaves. To form the loaves, you guys want to pat the dough down into kind of an even square, and we're going to cut that in half. So we're going to cut the square in half, and with each half piece, we're going to cut it in half, so it makes four equal parts. Since this um, recipe makes four small loaves, that's what it calls for. My loaves come out pretty big, so with each part of the dough. I am going to go ahead and form it into a ball and put it aside. So with the first one, I'm going to go ahead, form it into a ball and then into a long loaf. And basically you want to just start at the middle and with the heel of your hand, you want to go outwards, making it all even. Yeah. Just basically what you do for all four loaves and then you place it on top of your baking sheet. I don't know what it's named. Baking tray. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just applying more cornmeal, cornmeal to make sure it does not stick. It is a pain to clean um, stuck bread dough on a brand new cookie sheet that you really don't want to scratch up. So that's why I advise you guys to make sure it does not get stuck. You don't want to ruin your baking sheets. So just gonna continue that with all the loaves, and once that is done, you will have four beautifully portioned rolls. I mean loaves, rolls. Okay, after you finish all four loaves, you have to let that rest for another 50, 10 to 20 minutes until it's doubled its size. Again, I was cooking, so it only took about barely 10 minutes. So I'm just going to create some slash marks on top with just my sharp knife. And we're going to cover it up with plastic wrap and put it aside. Okay, so this is after the first baking at 375. Is it going to go First, I bake at 425 for 10 minutes, so that's what you saw after 10 minutes. Now we're going to drop down the temperature to 375, and we're going to bake that for 20 minutes. Okay, and this is what the bread looks like once it, once it is all done. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next week. And I hope you guys make this french bread and enjoy it with a whole bunch of family. Alright, see you guys next week.